Welcome back, everybody. Last week, we built our ruins, and as we left the project where we were at, it's got a nice coat of the Mod Podge black paint mix, and we're ready to do paint and detail. So, let's go to the table and see what we can come up with. Welcome back folks. We got our black on here nice and dry and now we're gonna get to our painting. So we, we need a few colors for this. Um, we've got a dark gray and that's gonna be for the main part of the rock. Uh, we've got we're gonna do a brick red as an underlay on the rock to give it a little bit of uh, texture and color. And then we're gonna give it a dry brush of gray. Now, we've also got our dirt on the outside here, which we're just going to do a regular brown. But the other thing we're going to do is we're going to also, in between putting the uh, red and the dry brush of the gray, we're going to kind of dry brush some brown on there to show, you know, dirt kind of rubbing up on this ground here. We're also going to use this brown to give our wood here its primary color and then after we do the brown we're gonna do a dry brush of a suede which is kind of a, a grayish brown to show the aging of the wood here and that's gonna cover the painting so we've got dark gray light gray brick red brown and a suede light -like color so let's start off with what we're gonna do we're going to start with our gray. We're going to grab our palette. Put a bit of the gray in there. Grab our wide brush. Get a little wet just to dampen it up. Put a little gray in the brush. And we're just going to hit our brick up. just to establish the base color of the stone. So, we don't want to put this on too thick. We want the black to still show through a little bit to show it's a darker stone and to highlight the points between the bricks. And again, we're not coming down at it. We're doing full strokes and we're coming at an angle to it so that we don't wipe out too much detail. We want some of that lovely stone texture we've done to kind of show through. We want to make sure we're getting enough to cover the pink that might show through that black just a tiny bit, but we don't want to just completely wash out the whole thing in the gray. So. We're going to want to make sure we hit all the walls, the backs of the walls, these rocks that we've created, this rubble we've created, and uh, we're going to hit the floor. So give me a few minutes, we're going to put this on, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to look at our next coat of paint. All right, so here we are, all grayed up. All the base coat of that dark gray is going on there, and as it's drying, you're getting a nice dark gray on there. And that'll be a real nice base. We get nice dramatic effects when we start doing some of our dry brushing and our uh, stippling effects on there. So, really nice, just a very basic gray. Turns out really well. Now, uh, the next thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to go back to the other technique we did when we made our tiles. Uh, except I'm not going to use multiple colors, but we're going to add um, a depth of color. So we're going to use uh, the uh, brick red. I'm just going to put a little bit on the, in our tray. And then we're going to have our slightly damp 
mostly wrung out painting sponge and we're just gonna gonna pick up some paint with it dab it a bit and then we're just gonna go over our gray and just to add a little bit of depth of color because I want this to stand out a bit from the tiles I've been making. I'm going with a little heavier of the red since it's the only undercoat color I'm doing. Now you're noticing that because of the sponge, and the size of the sponge, I'm going to get some of it on the brown or what will be brown. That's okay. We're going to paint over that. But I'm not able to get it to everywhere I want on the gray because of the size of the sponge. So what we're going to do to make up for that, you're just going to kind of take a smaller brush. You're going to wet it. Get some paint on your brush. And you're just going to gently... Apply a little bit of the paint in a random splashy pattern. In the tight corners and areas, you can't really get that sponge. Now, in the past, I have used other types of brushes uh, to get specific patterns or vectors or whatever you want to call it. Um, I've used a very soft bristle toothbrush and just kind of tap, 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 tap. And that works pretty good. Um, but I do find that just having a small brush it's wet so you're not getting heavy splotching and you're just kind of tapping around with it will give you the field of depth that you're looking for So I'm good with that. It's uh, got enough red to really kind of break up the gray. Um, and yet we're still going to see that this is a primarily gray structure. Just has some red overtones to the stone it was built with. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the brown. And we're going to paint the ground outside uh, the dirt that we made. And we're also going to, after we paint the ground brown, we're going to gently dry brush the tile floor, the broken tile floor, to show that some of this dirt that we've got out here has been tracked in and is on the ground. Uh, and again, it's gonna show where, it's gonna show field of depth. Um, again, you're trying to, a lot of what you're doing with paint is generating illusions. You know, you're trying to make something look old, you're trying to make look something worn, you're trying to make uh, different fields of light or different light sources depending on what it is you're working on. So paint is what you're making your illusion with. You want to convey what it is you're doing or what it is you're trying to do. So
we're going to finish uh, pinning up this ground. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, the black, a little bit of black showing through is going to be fine. When we get to the later stages, when we do some of our detail work at the end, where we're going to do some flocking, whatnot, you'll see why that's not that big a deal. But you want to get it a good heavy coverage because you want this to look like dirt. Um, Since I've got a brush here, what I can show, we've worn off a large amount of our brown paint. So this is a good way to show what our field of depth is going to look like. So we'll take it here, and then we've barely got any left in the brush. Show that brown tracking through our floor and on the ground. All right, I'm going to finish pinning up that floor and uh, we're going to come back. Okay, so we're back. We've got our wood painted brown. And we've got our ground painted with the brown now. And we've got our floor dirtied up with some of that mud color. And again, it's not uh, specific, just a regular medium brown. It works just fine. Um, at this point, um, we're going to get to the dry brushing portion. We're going to dry brush the wood and we're going to dry brush the stone uh, to give it, bring out that real final level of depth on the actual project itself. So we're going to start with our stone and we're going to use just a regular gray and again we're using a large brush. We put a little bit on the brush and then we want to you know, put some on the brush but we want to wipe most of it off. And what I'll do is I'll take like an old t-shirt or paper towel, whatever I have that I'm using at that time. And it looks like I'm not really getting any color left. This is just going to put the paint on the highest points and only a little bit. And as you can see, as we're doing this, it's really highlighting nicely. We're seeing our brickwork come out. We're seeing the red fade into being part of the rock. And we're seeing our stone texture really, really take shape. So, we're going to dry brush this, and then we're going to come back. All right, look what we got here. Nice and dry brush, detailed out, highlighted. Look at that. That stone really now pops out at you. And you got your dirty floor, you got your stone walls. Really, really starting to jump. Really nice. So, now we're going to get to our wood. Now our wood, we want to gray it up some because when wood ages, it can look gray. But we still want to keep a brown to it. So, we've got this suede color which is kind of like just a brownish pale gray. Now with the stone, we weren't so picky. We kind of came at different angles and we wanted to get the highlights so that the piece was really popped. The problem with wood is that we put a physical grain into it. And we, when we painted the brown, we painted with the grain to really kind of fill it. But now we just want to highlight it, so we're only going to paint against the grain just so we only get the very tops. Now we're going to do this the same way that we did the stone. So we we'll get a little paint on our brush, just a little tiny bit, 
and then we're going to wipe most of it off until it looks like we're basically clean and then we're just going to gently drag the brush across our wood and we're going to see that wood grain appear Got our aged looking wood. This piece is really coming together for us now. We are almost done. So I'm gonna finish painting the wood. We have to do the same thing to the support pillars. You want to go against the grain, so you're going against the side of them. And you don't want to forget about doing that bottom. You want to drag that across the bottom and get that grain in the bottom of there covered. So once we've got that all done. We're going to come back and we're going to detail our ground a little bit. We're going to do a little bit of paint and then we're going to do a wash. And we're going to talk about washes and how you make them when you come back. All right, so we've got our wood dry brushed here. Um, colors are a little bright and we're going to explain why we're going to fix that and wash in a little bit. We want the colors bright because we want the differences, the contrast to stand out. We're going to mute them later. Before we get to there though, I want to add a little color to this dirt. Um, we're going to add some flock afterwards, um, but what we want to do is just add a tiny, tiny bit of color. So I grab Spanish olive, and this is a little different, it's a green, but it's different than the flock that I use. And again, this is just going to add with a gentle, gentle highlight. This is going to add a field of depth to our colors. Again, it's all about creating the illusions of depth. So we're not doing quite a dry brush, but we're not quite doing a full coat either. We're just kind of, we got our brush wet, and we're just got most of the paint wiped off, and we're just doing a highlight. So we're gently stroking the brush, just catching the tops of surfaces, just to add a little bit of that Spanish green olive here and there. So we're good. Like you said, we didn't want to add a lot, just a little bit to add some depth. All right. So now we're going to let this dry. And while we're letting this dry, we're going to get our wash. Well, now what a wash is going to do, it's going to fill in the dark areas or the deep areas with a really nice black, like a black, just a black with a little tiny bit of brown I mix into my wash. It's also gonna, it's gonna pool, it's gonna make the contrasts a little less distinct, a little less cartoony, but it'll bring out, bring out the, again, depth of color, which is all about the illusion. So, how do we make a wash? And you can buy a commercial wash, but they're really expensive um, in the, the level you do them on. And if you're making miniatures and you're using a little bit of wash in miniature, that's one thing. Um, you're only using a little tiny couple drops right here. We're going to use it quite a bit on a project this size. So you're going to want to make your own. So what I do is I get a container um, about the size of, say, a cottage cheese container or a ricotta cheese container, about this big around, about that deep. So make, take your hand, do this, 
do that as well too. That just a, a couple of cups. Um, I'll add a couple drops of a dish soap. Uh, that's a surface tension breaker. Helps it flow aid. They call it flow aid. Um, if I have it, I'll use actually Jet Dry. Uh, because that's actually specifically what jet dry is supposed to do is specifically to break up the water to the surface tension. Uh, but if you don't have if you don't have jet dry, um, just a couple drops of dishwashing liquid, um, and then you're gonna add some black paint to it. Um, you're not adding a lot of black paint. You're just wanting a little bit in there uh, for a thing that size. I put in. I put in like 10, 12 drops, maybe a little bit more. Um, I wouldn't say more than a, than a teaspoon, but just enough so that the water has enough of a color to it so that the color clings, but it'll run off. I also put in with that a few drops of a medium brown um, just to add a little warmth to the wash. So I'm gonna get my wash and then we're gonna we're gonna apply that and show what that does as soon as this piece is dry. Now I suggest because wash can be messy if you're gonna work in a workstation, sta either have some plastic down or have a bin to catch the extra flow off because it's gonna flow. Uh, it's your idea there. You're using a liquid that you're gonna let run off. So let me let this dry. I'll get my stuff and we'll be right back. Alrighty, here we are, all highlighted, all dry, and now we're going to do our wash. Now again with the wash, I've kind of gotten the wash to where I wanted to go, and this is a lot by taste. So like I said, get yourself a container, you can put your water in, and then you're going to put in some brown if you like, and you put in some brown and some a good amount of black. Um, I put in probably half a teaspoon, maybe almost a full teaspoon, and then just a few drops of brown. And you'll know, you'll know if you got your color right. Um, I would suggest, you'll know you get your color right by how it reacts on your surface. I mean, if it just goes straight black, well, it's too, way too thick. So you wanna add some more water. Um, mine's a little foamy because I just had to shake it up. Uh, this is actually a fresh batch. Um, something had fallen in my container and it was nasty. I didn't see it in the blackness. So I had to make this fresh. So this is nice and new. Um, so we're going to take it. We're just going to brush it on. And yeah, I kind of like the way that's looking. So we're going to take this and we're just going to give our project a liberal coating of this and then let it pool on its own and run off on its own and dry on its own so you can see here I mean the blacks there but it's it's more of a highlight color it's just filling in the lowest levels it's taking some of the shine off of the high bright colors it's muting the project it's really making this look more organic, more worn, and highlighting the details, which is the goal. So, again, you just want to be liberal in the application. All right, so take your wash, go ahead and coat your project in your wash, and then let it dry. Um, we'll come back after this is dry and we're going to talk about flocking and ground detail. All right, we're back. Got a nice dry piece here. Look at this. This looks great. That wash really toned things down, really brought the highlights out, made the low lights nice and dark. We've got a nice brick thing here. I mean, this looks really cool. And if you wanted, you could take this right now, just like it is, put it on a table and use it. Barren. Now that's the thing, it's barren. I like things to look a little more organic, a little more overgrown. So the thing has got a little overgrown here. So how are we going to do them? We're going to use some flock. Now what flock is, is basically it's the green stuff that looks like grass and growth on the ground. 
Um, you can get a couple different places. Um, I use Woodland Scenic. Some guys make their own. I'm like, no. I, I want to make stuff. I don't want to make the stuff to make stuff. So <laughs> I use Woodland Scenics. Uh, this is their coarse turf light green. Um, this looks like, to me, it's one of my favorite to work with. Um, I've also got to add some color in there. I've got a finer turf. Um, this is from Fowler. It's a German railroading company. And this is called Struis material. And basically what it is, it's the same stuff, but you'll notice there's some colors mixed in there to make it look like it's a field of flowers or weeds or whatnot. So I'm going to use a little bit of that. Um, I've got some large clump and we're gonna use that to do like some bushes or whatnot uh, and this is the same stuff you get from Woodland Scenics this is just uh, the dark green and it's the large clumping material um, and then I've also got um, you can get this at Michael's or any type of floral stuff it's a uh, floral moss or a lichen 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 okay whatever I call it lichen I think it's a lichen I don't know what it is but it's green stuff and it's great and it's it's organic it's got some nice randomness to it and you can just take pieces and then just they're already treated you can just glue them down they're great they're good to go some guys will even glue them, glue them down and then put a little tiny bit of glue and then put a little different color on them to do the same thing that we do with the high with the uh, brushing here i don't know that it's always material uh, or necessary so i like what we got here so this we're going to work with so we get some 50 50 white glue just good old-fashioned white school glue Mix 50% water. I've got like a tablespoon of each in here. And then we're just going to take this brown. And we're just going to kind of coat it with our glue. And I'm using a junky brush that's going to get thrown away. So I would suggest using anything. Don't use one of your good brushes on it. Now the thing about flock is that you got to be prepared to get a little messy with it sometimes. So... And I'm just going to put a little bit down here and there. I'm not going to have this place look super overgrown. But I want a little bit on the ground. And then we're going to take a little bit of the spruce material. So that we can show weeds. A little too much came out there. And we're just going to... Let that come down. Well, I guess you're working in randomness. I got a big splotch there, so that's okay. That's the nice thing about it. You're kind of just going from randomness here. Um, so just kind of coat it the way you want. If you want to make it heavy green, then coat it heavy, pour it on heavy. Uh, if you want a little bit of lightness, like I want mine to look a little less overgrown, um, and I want some of the brown to show through, then you just put it on just like you're sprinkling a little bit on. And again, I don't know if there's a wrong way to put this on. I would just say go with the look you want. If you want it to be nice and overgrown and heavy green, um, just put it on the whole amount. Just pour it on and make sure everything's covered. And what will stick to the glue, stick to the glue, and then take what's left over and pour it back into your container. Um, Again, that's just not the look I was going for with this, but that's not wrong if it is what you're going for. Um, this is the beautiful thing. This is your terrain, and you get to decide what you want to make it look like.
think that's enough of the light green that I'm looking for. And then we take a little bit of the spruce material and we're just kind of sprinkling that around to add the weeds and the flowers and just add some nice depth of color. I think we're good for the flock. Now we want to add some overgrowth, some larger plants. Um, so I've been thinking from the beginning that I just, I really, really want just kind of a bush right here. Got that nice and glued down. And then I wanted a couple other pieces. Where weeds and larger brush. kind of grown here next to our building. wraps around and maybe one smaller one right there all right I'm thinking I'm gonna add one more smaller piece of this moss, lichen, lichen stuff. So now, we got our stuff in place. Now, the last thing I'm going to suggest you do, and this comes from my time as a railroader, this stuff will eventually get weak and the glue will kind of come up a little bit. You can have people handling it, and it's just foam. So you kind of want to lock it down. Now you can get these, they're pipettes or they're eyedroppers, um, you can get them um, from like surplus stores. They actually make them uh, for modeling specific, so these are. And just take some of that 50-50 glue, and you're just going to kind of want to drop it on top of your materials. And as that dries, that'll kind of seal your piece, it'll seal your piece in place. That's what exactly what it'll do. That's what it's for.
and it's okay if that runs over your project a bit because it'll do the same thing to this foam and this flock so that it doesn't get loose or seep off or anything or flake off it'll just kind of seal it all down uh, model railroaders do this when they put this kind of flock down and it just it really does just lock everything in place All right, and at this point, your project just needs to dry, and it will be done. And there we go. So we're gonna let ours dry. We take it on the table, put it with a couple minis, and take a look at it and see what it looks like in play. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll be back in a little bit. Alright, well here we are with our finished product. Got a couple of our freedom fighters in this ruined tower. Getting ready to fend off against hordes of zombies or mutants or whatever. But we've got, you know, nice sized doorway, good lines of sight for our guys to hunker up and snipe on. And it's just a really, really great piece for the game board. Whether you're using it for wargaming, or if you can use it in your next RPG, really simple project, but it really will look great, and you'll get a lot of use out of it. So, thanks for joining me on this project, guys. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Game on.